Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. We are in the garden and I'm at my green bean patch right here. Today we're gonna do a pretty big harvest. I'm not sure if we're gonna get every single thing that's out of the garden, but we're gonna get quite a few things. We definitely need to get all the potatoes out of the garden and then I know that when we get back up to the other house, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna store my potatoes more for longer term, like fresh eating potatoes, how to finish curing them and then store them. But for now, we're in the garden, we're at the green beans, and it is time to harvest. It's beautiful. It was actually kind of chilly this morning, which was really nice. But the sun is starting to peak out, and it's like the perfect temperature out here right now. Oh my goodness, so I wasn't sure if there was going to be green beans to harvest in here, but it looks like there are quite a few. So let me kind of get in here and get to work. Oh, my parents are on their way here. They are going to help me. They texted me and asked if I needed help. And I was not about to turn down help because it is a busy time of year and I can use an extra set of hands. There are tons in here that are just not quite ready. They need a couple, I don't know, two or three days. So I'm gonna leave these ones on here to mature and then I will get them later. But there are still plenty in here that are ready. And there's so many on here that are just starting. I planted these green beans on July 15th. I'm loving this fall planting. I think that moving forward, I love the idea of planting my green beans right after my garlic. So this was my garlic bed. I harvested all the garlic and then we planted this green beans right after. My parents just got here. Hi, good to see you all. And we are gonna continue this harvest. We have a plan, so let me show you what we're gonna do. I'm gonna continue to get these green beans out of here. We've got to move our elderberry plants. Friends, these elderberry plants, when we started them, were just little itty bitty sticks for my friend from Row & Co Farms. You can see how big they're getting. So we're gonna bring these up to the new house along with our turmeric. So we gotta get these packed up and our echinacea plants. So anything in pots is gonna come with us. But what my parents are gonna start on is my mom is gonna work on these potato. Oh well, she's been- By accident. <laughs> she beats. She harvested um, some pink celery. This You could probably put that back in the ground. Okay. So we had some volunteer pink celery in here and she found some volunteer Beet. beets in the black bean bed. But my dad is gonna start on this volunteer potato bed. So these were some purple potatoes that I planted two years ago. They never did anything and now they have come up and started to die back. So we're gonna get these today and our volunteer tomato actually has some tomatoes on it. So we'll leave this one alone. Try to save that one. If we can't, if we can't dad, that's okay. Okay. And then what we've all been waiting for is we're gonna get in here and I'm glad my parents hey. were wanting to help because for some reason, I don't really wanna get in there and do that. <laughs> Look, a big beet. Oh wow, that's awesome. Do you want those mom? Sure. Yeah, I don't like beets. You don't like beets? No. Oh, I'll take them. Yeah, you can have them. And I brought egg cartons. Go. Oh good, because <laughs> you can definitely have eggs. First treasure. First potato. First. So these are purple potatoes, and they're purple majesty, so they're purple on the inside too. I made french fries out of mine. They were really cool. Have you ever seen in? red french fries? They stay the same color. What are we gonna put them in? I'll go get you a basket. Okay. There might not be a ton of potatoes in here just because right. they were be fun. volunteered. Treasures, remember, treasures. That's right. Oh, there's some big beets in here. Yeah, those all self-seeded themselves last year because they went to seed. That's a cucumber. Oh, and I saw a recipe, Becky, I'm going to try. I have lemon cucumbers. Uh-huh. It's, um, it's kind of a Mexican thing. Thin sliced cucumbers, thin sliced, chopped tiny jalapenos, lime juice, cilantro. Oh, yummy. A kind of a pickle. Yeah, like a quick... Cool. Yeah. One thing my parents were just noting is that it's a lot quieter because the chickens are not here. It's lonely. <laughs> it feels so lonely. It, it has a completely different feel back here without having that extra life that they bring to the garden. It's peaceful, but 
It's just quiet. To make it easier when we get back to the house, I'm putting the less ripe ones in this basket and the ones that are at least orange in this basket so these can get spread out on the tables and these will be ready to eat sooner. Oh my goodness, we're finding good stuff. Good potatoes. Good. Little, but, but fun. I threw a load of tomatoes in my freezer yesterday and someone told me that when you freeze them and then you take them out and you thaw them, the skin just slips off because I hate blanching and peeling tomatoes. And I love tomato soup without the peels in it. So I think that's what I'm going to do with mine. Had you heard that, Becky? Yeah. Did I hear that from you? No, you didn't hear that from me, but that's definitely a true thing. Bring this ground up. I like the, the shape of your romas are different okay, than the shape of are. my romas. They're yeah, kind of ridged. One. Must be a yeah. different Roma. Yeah. I don't know, they're just okay. a plain old Roma. They didn't, I mean, they just said Roma tomato on the seed packet. It didn't say there. anything one. fancy. Oh yeah, we're getting. Oh, wow, that's a lot. Yeah, we're getting, look at that, biggest. Yeah, that's great. That's great. All right, we're getting started. This is the first part that we've got uh, so far, just in this little section. So the, all these little volunteers are getting... Oh, there's even some out in the... Uh... Walkway? Yeah. We'll find them all. They're treasure. Here's one. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. That's a strange looking potato. <laughs> Here we go. There's one right there. Here's another one. Small ones, but a little bit bigger. See that, and then we go right down around here. We can see that they're a little bit bigger. So this is fun. Look at this, five of them. Okay, here we go again. We're gonna put down the pitchfork, try to miss the potatoes. And then we're gonna, here's a plant right, right here. So if we pull that up, do we, no, now watch this. We're gonna go right down underneath where that plant was. We're gonna bring this ground up carefully. Okay, there they are. Here's one, here's one. Look at this, that plant really produced. Oh, maybe this was the biggest one yet. Look at that. That's a lot of potatoes right there. Can they see this? Yeah, that was from one plant. Wow. Check that out. That's, that's the biggest one so far. That's amazing. And, yeah, I think there's more here, but I think I'll bring these over to our epoxy. Oh, yeah, we're getting... Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, we're getting... Look at that. Biggest... Yeah, that's great. That's great. So these potatoes, the soil is pretty damp. We had our first rain yesterday in 74 days, I think. And so the soil is a little bit moist plus the irrigation ran this morning. So we are going to, I'll show you how to dry and cure these along with what we're gonna do with the ones we already harvested that are already dried and cured and how I'm gonna store those fresh, hopefully well into the winter. All right, I found the biggest potato earlier and I found the smallest potato so far uh, just now. So we have the biggest, we have the smallest. Do you like your tomatoes left? No, we've got tomatoes all over there, Mom. Oh, okay. I've never been over to that bed. So from this one raised bed, this is our fifth time harvesting this amount of tomatoes from that, which is pretty incredible. Plus there's still so many more green ones in here. We're gonna let them stay on the vine until they start to blush. So we'll probably get one more harvest off these plants. You got it? This is heavy. <laughs> there's lots of uh, tomatoes here. Yeah. 
He's, right He's here. here on the tomato plant. Too bad the boys aren't here to see him. He's oh, a light isn't green. He cute? Oh, where is he? Oh, yeah. Right there. Not very, uh, not nervous at all. No. no. I am surprised by the resilience of these tomato plants. These plants have not been watered in two weeks and they are still producing like crazy. I could have brought you a rue apron, Mom. <laughs> I should have, I have like four of them. Oh yeah, next time, bring me one. Transferring from my shirt to the baskets. I pulled some weeds along here too. Thank you. All right, now do I have to go in between here? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to put my hood up. I don't want any hives on my neck. Yep, I definitely put these trellises way too close together. Live and learn. Yeah, next year you can do them further apart. I'll have more space next year too. So I've yet to make that salsa verde that I purchased those tomatillos last week, which I was kind of bummed about that I never got to it, but it's probably a good thing because now I'm going to have today's harvest of tomatillos to add to it which I think will be better. Tomatillos last a really long time in the refrigerator, especially if they're freshly harvested. I feel like I'm a jungle explorer back here. You can't even see you back there. <laughs> <laughs> in between these trellises and trying to keep them from touching the skin on my neck. You look really cute, Mom. go sideways. I know. <laughs> so note to self, don't plant your tomato trellises a foot and a half apart from each other. That's way too close. It's quite a few tomatillos. Yeah, that is. I didn't make that salsa verde yet. My mom found the cucamelons. They're really cute. Look at this. Now, how cute is that? They look like kind of jelly beans or something. Yeah, so this is a cucamelon. I ate one that was about this big. Yeah, that one's not right. It was bitter. So I'm going to try this one. That The one I ate, I spit out. <laughs> wasn't very good. It's just like a cucumber. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Way better. They're a little bit... Like this one's a little sour. Yeah, was yours sour? A, yeah, the first one I had was really sour. I don't think that's big enough for all those tomatoes. A lot of those tomatoes aren't good. Oh, the bottom one. We've gotten all the green beans I think that are ripe for today. So while my mom finishes harvesting tomatoes and my dad's still working on the potatoes, I'm gonna work on these peppers. And just like with the tomatillos, I have yet to do anything with any of those peppers we harvested last week. Life just got a little bit crazy and I didn't get to very much food preservation this week, which is no problem because they definitely are fine <laughs> in the fridge for this amount of time. So once we kind of get this bulk harvest today done, I probably will come back one more time, but this week we need to really focus on preserving a bunch of this stuff. There are still a lot of peppers I'm leaving on the plant, but I'm gonna give them as long as possible to mature before I pick them. While I've been 
harvesting peppers, my mom's been harvesting the tomatoes off these plants that have been in these root bags. And we've talked about this before, but one thing we've struggled with, the tomato plants in these bags have been blossom end rot. And part of that is the soil that I chose to put in these root bags. I don't think it's the root bags themselves, but a lot of them, the second kind of growth on them are, is really beautiful. So my mom was able to get a huge, huge harvest. That whole planter, full plus she has two more plants to go. And look at what I found. They, uh, Becky doesn't like them, but I do. They were planted around the edge and they're, they're a different shape and I think it's because they didn't get as consistent water or are they a different variety? They're a different variety. They're called cylindra beets. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they grow, they're supposed to grow long and skinny like that. So you can plant them closer together? Yeah. Well, yeah. that is yummy. Yeah, you can enjoy those, Mom. I will. Look at what I just found right here. This is in the walkway and this is where we packaged up the cilantro or the coriander seed. And these are little coriander plants or cilantro plants that are growing in the walkway. I love when I see little volunteers like that. It makes me so happy. We're just gonna let those go. Those aren't gonna do anything, but I just thought that was kind of fun. So what my mom is doing now, she got all the tomatoes picked from all the different areas. She's cleaning out the green stalk. What was this? That was kale that went to seed. My word, it's a tree. Yeah. I don't even think I could break it. It's like a tree branch. Can you believe that? And we are going to move this green stalk and our other green stalk to the new house. These come apart really easily. These things are amazing. They were so productive for me up until we were actively doing the move and they weren't getting watered. But I have some serious big plans for these for next year. So my mom's going to take the time and just kind of deadhead and clean out any of the dead stuff. We're going to get these in the truck and then we'll be able to plant them up for next year and I'm really really excited I have two of them I kind of want to get two more I can I want one. Oh, my mom wants I want one. one I'm going to put strawberries in it we um I've not successfully been able to do strawberries because of my pest problem we have a lot of rodents we live out in a giant field so watching this and watching Becky's videos on it I I'm going to get one of these and I'm going to put it on my patio where I can water it from a pitcher easier because my other irrigation system more like my garden is wouldn't water this and then we'll have strawberries and the grandkids will have so much fun <laughs> picking strawberries and we do ever bearing so they're all summer long won't that be fun so that's my plan as well i have two and i want to get two more i want this one the one that my mom just cleaned out i want it to be a tower of flowers it's going to be stunning as long as everything grows properly and then i want two for strawberries and then i want one for vegetables so it's going to be kind of a fun thing that we're going to do next year if you're interested in the green stock i can link them down below but i just have a lot of plans my brain is going and i'm really excited i'm going to start putting these turmeric plants in the truck Stay tuned because we are about to harvest these turmeric plants on this day i wasn't planning on doing it but I'm really excited that we decided to go ahead and harvest the turmeric. We have the turmeric and elderberry plants now in the back of the truck. My mom is filling my dad's truck with the green stalks. It's nice to carry them when they're dry soil. Yeah. It's a lot lighter. How's it going back here? Good. Looks like you're done. Yep, got this bed. Awesome. I think done, left the beans. Um, and uh, Looks great. Let's fine. see how many we got. Yeah, I think we're doing pretty good. That's a lot. For volunteers. For volunteers, yeah. Yep. We'll take it. Yeah, that's very nice. Looks great. Okay, so what are we doing next? We are doing. Are we moving in here? We're moving in here. Okay. Now, let's just get an idea. The problem is you have to kind of be bent over. We're going to try to figure out a way so we can prop up this. There we go. Oh, that's a great idea, Dad. Oh, yeah. That'll work. How about that? Perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be way better. This is what we're working with in here. All I did was throw potatoes on the ground and then 
I put straw over top of it. That was all I did. Nothing fancy. Oh, there's a potato. Yeah, oh, we got some. These are nice and dry too. I love this roost out method where you, oh, look at all those. Great, fun. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. Okay, what? You can see that there was some animal activity in here though, because this is a tunnel of some sort. So should we come up with a start in one corner and work yep. our way? I think I'll go over there. We're gonna start over here. Just sitting right under the straw and uh, growing right on top of the ground. Amazing. Did you plant these in here, Becky, or did they just come up? No, I planted these. I just had some extra. Yeah, I just stuck them in here after the chicken blast. Then, obviously, yeah. they would have eaten this. Move. You can definitely tell the size difference because these were not watered even one time. So for 74 days they never had water, but they still grew something. So just to go over what I did here, this was the old chicken run and I had a few extra seed potatoes. I literally threw the potatoes on the dirt. I didn't dig them in or anything. I had an old bale of straw. I covered it in straw. I did not water. I did not do anything with these potatoes for the last 70-ish days. And this is the harvest we're getting today. Oh, wow, look at all these in here. I pulled it up and they're all... Right there. Under here. Yeah. Cool. So you can see where I pulled this plant up. There are tunnels in here. And oh, some of the potatoes have teeth marks in them. So they were being enjoyed by, see here's a tunnel right here too. Yeah, by moles probably. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> you can, I mean. <laughs> teeth marks. Teeth marks, yeah. Which is fine. It's this was just a bonus patch. Did you go all the way to the side here? Yep. But those can be. Those are actually some decent sized yeah, ones they for. they didn't chew these up. Wow, that one's pretty good. Oh, this too. one they did. Oh, in yeah. stages. Oh, yeah, you they can see. They ate that one in stages. Yeah, they did. <laughs> okay, watch this. Here we go. Let's see what's under here. We'll turn this over and. Oh, just one There's potato. One. There's one right there, too. Oh, yeah, we got Here's a big one right here, Dad. Oh, Mom. Yeah, that's a pretty... Oh, look at that. This hollowed out. Yep. Oh, well, this one you can just cut that piece off. No big deal. Oh, see, there's a really good example of a tunnel right here. You can really see how whoop, some animals live it in there. I saw a frog, too, over here on oh. my side over there. You want the nibbles on ones, or are they garbage? No, they're fine. They're, they can be... Yeah, they're low. The animals can enjoy the rest of them. Oh, look at this. Oh, there's some good. big ones. Yeah. Look at this one. Biggest one, maybe. Oh, yeah. That's the biggest one for yeah. sure in here. Might be weight-wise the amount of potatoes I planted. That's okay. That's funny. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a lot. See that? Oops. I'm glad I had a hat on. Okay. See that one with the spots harvest. and the peels? Oh, yeah. That one right there. That's how almost all of mine are. It's scab, I think. Somebody said... It's a virus in the ground that attacks a potato, but it doesn't hurt to eat them, so we've been eating them. Yeah, it's just kind of like a cosmetic thing. Nice! It's hard to see those in there because they're purple, but that looks great. That looks really great. We're going for a record harvest this year. My mom grabbed the wheelbarrow out of our truck. Where are you, Mom? Right here. Oh. Uh, so we're going to start collecting all the pots as well. So we grabbed a wheelbarrow just so we can put more in. Trips. Yeah. Perfect. Do it. Oh, that's way better. I can wheelbarrow all day. 
but I can't carry the pot away from my body out in front. Okay, I'll climb in if you want to put them on there. Oh, that's nice, Dad. You have a step on the back of your truck. Yeah, isn't that cool. At first, we were trying to save the soil in these pots, and then you'll see we quickly realized there is just not enough space. I have too many pots to move all of these in the trucks, so we are going to revisit this idea. We are grabbing all the pots and we are emptying them with soil. I could recycle this soil and revitalize it, but I have no idea where all of these things are gonna go. And the idea of trying to save the soil to reuse. I think it was pretty useful. With, I don't know if this is making sense. I need a screwdriver <laughs> to poke in the hole. All right, let me just go around the edge again. It's loose all the way around the edge. There we go. Oh, you got it? got it? So the idea of having to try to store these with the soil in and not being able to stack them just seems overwhelming to me. And so we're gonna go ahead and just put the soil in these raised beds to fill the raised beds up. And that way that can add a little bit more soil to the raised beds. And then I can, when I'm at the new house, I can stack them, I can organize them. And I don't just have a ton of pots taking up a ton of space. I plan to reuse all these pots. I bought all these pots. I think they're beautiful. I want to use them, but I just, I can get more soil. And I'm going to be buying a lot of soil and compost in bulk for the new garden. So I can just use that soil to fill these up. And they're just gonna take up a lot less space. This is three pots here that I can stack and I can stack those inside this small wine barrel and it'll just be a lot less space that they're gonna take up. You know, these beds were probably due for a top up of soil anyway. So I think it'll be a win-win. That's just mint. Yeah. Thanks for helping, guys. Oh, our pleasure. I don't know how I would have. I wouldn't have been able to do this by myself. Oh, no. I didn't realize how much work we had left. Feeling so much better about this idea of compacting everything. Another thing we decided we're going to go ahead and do is just harvest this ginger right now. I don't know how much longer it needs to grow. Honestly, I don't think there's gonna be hardly any harvest out of it. So we're just gonna harvest it today. Treasure and then hunting. Treasure hunting. Treasure hunting. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. This was just ginger that I purchased from the grocery store. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. Look at that. I mean, it's kind of dry, but there's ginger in there. Yeah, it's because it hasn't been watered. Now you know you really have to water it. Yeah, but I think I could peel that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, gosh. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure you could. I've never seen ginger plants. This might be bigger because it's... Yeah, this is moist. Oh, moist soil. There's a piece. Oh, my oh, gosh. Look at this. Oh, how fun. <laughs> okay, so... This, this is as fun as potatoes. I mean, oh, and it smells a lot better than doing it potatoes. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, what do you want to put them in? This one's wet. Oh no, it's not bad. Well, that was a little shrivelly. Yeah, they're just dry, I think. Because oh, this is one. <gasps> look at this oh, one. Oh, look at, yes, that one got good water. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh, look at yeah. that. That's like when you buy in the store. That is beautiful. Oh, it smells so good. Look at this one, it's deceiving. It's not a very big green part compared to some of these that had nothing on them. This one has a huge one. It has a little piece of root on it. So let me grab the turmeric plants and we'll do turmeric next. Oh, see, that's a little one. Yeah. Oh, here's one. That one, we must have broke the top off of it because we didn't see a top there. That's awesome. You have to really like potatoes. You really have to go through the dirt. You want to pass them all down to me and then we can mm -hmm. empty them all together? Mm -hmm. I have better feelings about these because these were actually watered on with the irrigation. And then those are elderberries, so we want to keep those. Yeah. You might want to tuck them away up here or put them inside your truck. These smell good too. 
don't know what turmeric smells like or had. I probably smell dirt now. Oh yeah, I can smell it. <gasps> what do you see? I don't see anything. That, oh, here's one. That's turmeric. So it looks like ginger. Yeah, it's it, it's a rhizome, so it grows the same as ginger. I didn't know that. It's supposed to be really good anti-inflammatory. I mean, I wouldn't say it's the biggest harvest, but there's more than nothing there, so that's good. How big of a piece did you start with? About that size. Oh. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh yeah. there's a big one. Yeah, that's huge. It probably would have still kept growing, but... Yeah, well, it looks like they're, it's got new it's, ones Yeah, it on does. It. We could probably just break it like this. So, I don't know, do you dry it and powder it? Yeah, yeah, we'll dry well, it. Well, do you want to save that piece yeah, then? Yeah, definitely. You definitely don't need a big, deep pot for them. No, that's for sure. Oh, see, this is very little harvest on this one. There's something there, though. Yeah. Well, this one has a pretty big oh, one. That, oh, that's a big Look one. Look at that one. It's deceptive. The size of the harvest to the size of the plant. Yeah. Wow. That's a good sized piece of turmeric. Oh, here's a good, whoops, a good size one oh, yeah. from a really small plant. It's, it's well, this one had a, oh, that's a big piece too. I think too. it got really good water. Yeah, I think watering is key because this one has a lot of pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Water. Water is key. Which I think in most gardening. That's <laughs> I don't know. Is that a one to take right here? This part? Yeah, I think so. Ready to take this back? What is this here with the purple flowers on it? That is anise. What do you do with that? It's, I think a medicinal herb. It smells like licorice. Right. But do you harvest it? Do I don't know. I, I'm sure people do. I just... Planted it for the flowers? Yeah, for the pollinators. It smells really good. Well, you gotta come smell it. I got gloves on. Squish one for me. Oh, here I can. Oh, I can with gloves. It doesn't matter. Ooh. It smells like you, black, black jack yeah. licorice. Yeah, if you like... Well, you know, it probably make really good tea out of it. Oh, you're probably right. Yeah. You guys know what to do with anise. Let me know. <laughs> I just planted it because it's supposed to be good for pollinators, and this, these seeds were actually a gift in my peel box, so I thought it'd be fun yeah, to try something I new. I think you probably can make tea out of it. I don't know Wonder if you if the do leaves, the, the flowers or the leaves. Or? The leaves don't smell. Not as much. So I maybe wonder, you'd pick the flowers. Should or the pick roots? them just in case? No. That's <laughs> <laughs> I've got enough I have to process. But if you guys have any suggestions on that, I'd greatly appreciate that. So in this shed, this was the old chute. We have some tools. We're gonna go ahead and grab what we can fit in the wheelbarrow today. We didn't use this for a chicken coop because let me show you inside. I cleaned it out once. Yeah, you did a great job. <laughs> it is just falling apart and molding and leaking and rotting and gross, and that's why I never wanted the chickens in here. But for keeping tools that you only grab and you're only in here for a few minutes, it worked fine. So I think we got all the tools. I'll be back to grab some of my seed starting stuff. I'll do that a different day. But we figured while we had the wheelbarrow out, we might as well grab some of the tools and the tea posts. I'm so grateful for my parents' help because I was just planning on doing a garden harvest on this day with them. And I had not realized how much stuff still needed to be moved. So I was really grateful that my parents had their truck that we could go ahead and load both cars up with the garden supplies and all the extra things that I just had kind of forgotten about. Even my lawn chair or my garden chair and table, the one I used to sit at when I had more time and enjoy the garden, I would have almost totally forgotten about that. And so I was really grateful that they came out and helped. This is the chair I was talking about in my little table. I bought these second hand last year and I used to use them all the time and I'm hoping next year I'll have more time to sit in it and enjoy the garden. My mom and I were eating 
raspberries. My dad got the harvest in his truck. And they were good too. So we have our peppers and tomatoes, more tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatillos, are not watered potatoes that did pretty good, but it's probably the amount of potatoes that I planted. More potatoes, oh, this one's bad, we can just chuck this one. I'm gonna chuck that one. Oh, yeah. And you can see how much better this looks with all those pots stacked. We got the green stock stacked. So we'll just start fresh next year, and I think that will be a lot better. That This project today ended up being way more than I anticipated. I, I knew I had a lot of pots. I didn't realize how many pots. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go run to the store and pick up some crates so we can put the potatoes we already cured in those crates. We're gonna unpack all this stuff. We are gonna use these crates to store our potatoes in and a couple other things, I think. And when we were on the way up to the new house, I called Josh and I asked him if he would bring us down some water because we were all pretty parched. There's a big spider web right there. Oh, I walk yeah. into it every day. I just got it. The girls are running down. They've been free ranging. <laughs> Mom, you want, you want to get their eggs? You can yeah, my curtains. Awesome. I didn't collect any today. How many did we get? Two, Two four, four, six. six. Yep, that's about right. Awesome. They've been free ranging since Wednesday. Oh, they're so happy. Yeah, so, so happy. Oh, that water made all the difference. So Josh brought us down water. We just got down to the house. And let me show you what we need to do down here. We're gonna do a little bit of organizing with the produce that we harvested. What was this, two weeks ago we did? Three weeks ago maybe? Probably three. Three weeks ago? So I cured these potatoes down here on cardboard. Curing just means you dry them out so they can do long-term storage. I put a fan on them. And we're gonna do that with the ones we harvested today. But these have been drying now for probably three weeks. So what we need to do is grade these potatoes meaning we need to go through and select the ones. So we're gonna look at each potato and if there's like a bad spot or something like this where the potato is still fine to eat, but that's not gonna stay good for long term. We're gonna put in one box so I know that we need to eat those potatoes first, along with any ones that have green, and we will... That does 12 pounds. Oh, we got 12 pounds, that's awesome. So while mom's processing the potatoes, I'm gonna put all of these onions into this box. I cleaned up and processed half of them the other day and we need to get the rest of them processed because these are not going to last long term down here. We also decided to separate the potatoes based on the size of the potato too because that might depend on how I want to cook with them in their final use. So the larger potatoes are going in one basket regardless of the variety of potatoes the medium ones are going in another box and the small ones are going into another box. One way I want to preserve some of these potatoes is I want to make some twice baked potatoes and that's kind of why I wanted the larger ones separate so they would be easier come time when I want to make those twice baked potatoes for freezer meals because those freeze up really, really well. We also needed to do some organizing downstairs. When we moved in and we moved the freezers downstairs, we kind of pushed a bunch of stuff to the center of the basement and we never put the shelves where they were gonna live long term. So my mom and I took a few minutes to go ahead and put the shelves where we want them. There is a drain between where these two shelves are going. So I thought I would put my two bulk food storage containers between them and then we can have a food shelf and then our household goods shelf. I'm going to put the potato crates on the bottom shelf here right next to where you can see those spaghetti squash those spaghetti squash, if you can see them down there, that is from last year's garden and they don't show any signs of going bad. So I'm really glad I didn't grow any more spaghetti squash this year. We do have a lot more organizing that needs to be done down here that we will do together. And then once this whole area is completely put together, there will be a full tour of it once we have all of the preserves that we're doing for this year as well. These are the potatoes we just harvested today. So I'm going to lay these down on this cardboard here. These are going to be perfect roasting potatoes. Oh yeah. They're so good. Those potatoes like that. I'm going to weigh the other box of potatoes that we got. 
right here. 19 exactly, so 12.2 plus 19. These potatoes have quite a bit of moisture on them from it raining last night, so we definitely need to cure these ones. Oh, I think you got some of it. And I'm going to turn the fan on these ones when they're ready to go upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need any more uh, in Dust. my lungs. Yeah. While my mom and I were working downstairs, my dad and Josh started taking out all these pots. And what the plan for these pots is, they wanted my direction before they made any final decisions, is I would like everything in the shed that was left from the previous owner. This is why I think it's best that we emptied the soil out of them. We can stack everything, keep it really organized. Next spring, we can reevaluate and kind of start from scratch. Honestly, you all know just as much about what the garden is gonna look like as I do right now. And as soon as we finish out the garden at the old house, all of our thoughts are gonna be going on the new garden. <laughs> but it's just a matter of kind of buttoning up this one, starting the next one. So I think we made the right choice of emptying everything and we'll just start over and go from there. But I. I do know that you can kind of repurpose, revitalize your potting soil. You don't have to dump it out and use new every year, but that's just what we're going to do this year. And these little stinkers found their way up to the front porch. So I am going to have to figure out a solution to keep them at least in the backyard because you kind of are making a mess of my bark dust, sweet ladies, sweet ladies. And look at this one over here. There was another one that was up here. I don't know what she's eating. What are you what are you doing in the bush? What are you doing in the bush? Oh, they're so fun. They are so fun. You know, I think the reason they're up in this bark dust is because I've said it before, it hasn't rained in like 74 days, other than it rained up here for like an hour yesterday. And the mulch or bark dust is probably holding in more of that moisture than, you know, the dark, dead grass. So there are probably some more bugs and things in there. So enough being distracted by the chickens. It's time to get to work to finish putting this project, kind of buttoning it up. I am just stacking all of the pots in and of themselves just to condense everything and try to make this area as organized as possible. I'm really grateful that we have this little shed that we can store these things in. I'm gonna go ahead this week and go down and get all my seed starting stuff and I'm gonna stack it on that black shelf that was in the corner over there and I'll just try to keep all the garden stuff in one spot and it'll make it a lot easier for next year. We gotta get some of this stuff in the fridge. Everything but the tomatoes. So do you wanna put the ginger in the bag? Are they mixed up, ginger and turmeric? No, that's ginger, this is turmeric, or the other way around, I'm not sure. And then I'll put the tomatillos in here. Hard to say. Ginger. Oh. Ginger. I already got the peppers in the refrigerator, the outside fridge. Do you want to take any of these home? Um, I have lots of tomatoes and lots of green beans. Would you like a cucumber? Uh, I actually have lots of lemon cucumbers too, okay. so thank you. Harvesting is super fun, but the reality is there's a whole other step that comes into it. Is once we bring the harvest inside, it has to be dealt with. And one of those realities is even just managing it to get it to where it can stay fresh until you're ready to process it. So that's what we're doing now. Oh, those tomatoes are ready to do something with. These tomatoes need to go in the freezer or something. Once I freeze those, I'll take these ones out and put on the table there. But... Do you want me to put them in a bag for the freezer? Oh, sure. Yeah, so I got a paper bag. I am questioning my life choices about buying those tomatoes from the local farmer <laughs> that I made the enchilada sauce with because I always question my gardening abilities and I was not sure if I was actually gonna get enough tomatoes for us for a year. And I think I will have reached that goal, 
but because I purchased those tomatoes from the local farmer, it just is a little bit more food security in my pantry that maybe next year's garden, because it's gonna be a brand new garden and it's gonna be a lot of work just to establish the beds and things, maybe we won't get as good of a harvest. And so I will be grateful that I purchased those tomatoes from the local farmer to ensure that we'll have tomatoes products for at least probably the next two years and we get to do some fun different type projects. My mom is putting in her bag the Roma tomatoes. Those are the ones that I want to make ketchup out of. And then the ones that I was putting in my bag were all the round tomatoes. I'm trying to keep them separate just so that when I go to process them, I know kind of like the moisture content and I can decide what I want to make out of them depending on if I use the round tomatoes that have a lot more moisture and juice or if I want to use the Roma tomatoes that are a paste tomato that have less seeds and less juice. And I think that will be perfect for ketchup. These two bags are what were on the table before. I still have some of these, but I want to make some, I don't know, BLTs and pico de gallo this week. So I'm going to try to save some of these big slicing ones to do that with. I'm going to go pop these two bags in the freezer. And then these are the ripe tomatoes that we harvested today. So my mom's gonna put those in this bag and we're gonna get those in the freezer. And then I started dumping out the ones that need to ripen and we need to go through this basket right now as well. I have got to go figure out space to put these in the freezer because I'm running out of freezer space. I got that half the cow and my freezers are very full down there. The thing about having chest deep freezers is I like to keep them about half empty because then you can keep them really organized. But right now they're pretty full. So it's gonna be a little bit of maneuvering in order to get these tomatoes to fit into my freezer. But I think I'll be able to make it work. It'll just be very, very full. What I need to do tomorrow is start processing a bunch of this stuff. We've got salsa verde we need to make, ketchup we need to make. You know what? what? Hmm, maybe I'll leave. Yeah, I'll leave that one out if you're gonna make ketchup. Yeah, maybe I'll put it in the roaster tonight so it'll be oh, ready yeah. tomorrow. Maybe that's what I'll do. Question. So, yeah. Do you, you do skins and all and you make your ketchup? Not with ketchup. Ketchup, I'm going to remove the skins and the seeds. So you have to blanch them first? I'm going to use a food mill. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. 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 I made ketchup one other time and I left the seeds and peels in it because that's usually what I do with my pasta sauce and I did not like it. The flavor was really good. I used it in dishes like sloppy joes, topped meatloafs, but just as a, like a condiment, I didn't like it. So this year I'm gonna take the time to peel and skin tomatoes. So yeah, I'm not gonna put those in the freezer. We're gonna make ketchup tomorrow and salsa verde tomorrow. I also picked up an Azure haul and it's been sitting on my counter for two days because I have not had time to <laughs> manage it. So I need to get this taken care of tonight as well. So if you guys enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up. If you're new around here, I would, uh-oh, is there a bad one? Cracked. So Juiced. I'll put that one right in the freezer. It got squished. That's okay. I think we're gonna have enough tomatoes. If we lose one, it'll be okay. This one did too. Probably from that one. Oh yeah, that one has some mold on it. Maybe the girls will enjoy these too. Oh yeah, they're here now. Yeah. This one got smashed too. Okay. This bucket we used had a bump in it. Oh. And so the ones that were on the bump and had more tomatoes go on top. Especially if they were ripe. Yeah. So I'm going to end this here. You're welcome to subscribe if you want to see what I have going on around here. We do a lot of gardening, food preservation, a little bit of organizing, a ton of cooking, and we just have a lot of fun together. I just want to say thank you for being you. Thank you for being here. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Bye. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.